how's everything going? Great. Good. <laughs> good how's time? everything going? Oh, good. <laughs> tired? I'm a little tired, I won't lie. Um, good conference so far? Yes. Yeah. Good. I missed several ones, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, not at all. Um, so, uh, we'll jump right in at the questions. Um, so, people have some questions about your presentation from the first day. Yep. Um, one of the questions was um, when you talk about the, like doing the type inference, mm -hmm. people were interested if you could talk a little bit more about that and maybe talk about like how, how do dynamic methods and metaprogramming fit in with that? And sort of like when, do, when would the type checking happen? Or would, there, would the program ever type check itself? Would it just be a database? Uh, the, the database stuff and uh, the type checking stuff is done and will, will be done in the compile time. So that we cannot check the things that happen there that dynamically, like uh, eval and uh, the define method things. So in that case, we just ignore them. Okay, the, at the beginning, so at we, I am going to create some kind of the prototype of the independent type checker, like a lint things. So the, you can consider these kind of the type errors as a warning to the, your program. So the, you, that might be false positive just because of the, the, the method missing stuff or the, the evil stuff, but uh, you know, you pro, at least the, the type checker can warn you that we cannot de detect that kind of error in compile time information. So I mean, compile time yep. is such a vague term with Ruby, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, it's not like C, where we know that like there's this time where we're compiling and there's this time where we're running. Compile time is sort of this strange time while we're running the code that sets up the other code. So like, uh, do, you, do you think that uh, w will the stuff that runs at compile time be able to see through require statements? Uh, yes. So the like would it be able to see into gems, for instance, that kind of thing? Yeah, but uh, the, the reference is pretty limited. But the, what, the compile, uh, the runtime, as I mean, the compile time type checker sees the require that look for the the library so library source code. So then include read them. Mm -hmm they the source code into the software. Okay. Do you think of the type checker as part of the normal loader or is it a separate thing that's looking at the code? Uh, the separate thing at the oh. beginning, at okay. least. Okay, cool. Um, again, if this is too vague, we, you can ask a question. We've got people. Oh, we have people, we have questions already. Is it, is it related to this topic or is it another topic entirely? It's on gills, that's fine. Uh, ask Koichi, though, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait, wait, let, let, go ahead and ask your question, and then we'll, give, we'll let Matt turn, you know, turn you down. So. Can, can, they, can they all be this close? This is, this yeah. is kind of easy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I didn't want to make you run. <laughs> uh, I, I could ask the, a similar question with regards to type checking. So, so with your type checking methodology, I, I believe you had said during your talk that you were looking at this, but you could you could throw it out, you, just like you did from last year, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, what other methodologies have you considered uh, that are are like number two, or say number three on the list, or are there no number two or number three at this point? You mean for type checking? For type checking. Uh, like, what crazy idea do you have when you go walk the dog? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. when I have all my crazy ideas, at in the shower. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so the, for type checking, I have no that, that kind of crazy idea, though. <laughs> but uh, you, know, the, you know, the usual compile time information is very limited, at, at least for Ruby programs, because you know, we have nothing, right? But uh, so we can infer something by, say, uh, assignments or from the it literals, you know, we, you can know string literal is a literal, mm -hmm. but uh, the other, otherwise, so we have no, no information, no uh, argument types, no return variable types, so the, we, we don't have enough information, so the, so 
to complement that. So we add some kind of the database things, like a run t a gathering runtime information, or maybe so the putting out the, the method set information out of the running program. So then check the take this kind of the inconsistency out of the, those information. Did you, when you were thinking and, and working about this, did you look at the other um, attempts that people have made mm -hmm. for it? Like, uh, I, I know that uh, a conversation I've had over the last couple of days, someone brought up was, do you remember the old Diamondback movie? Yeah, 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 soft diving. Yeah, yeah, did you, I mean, do you feel like those, I remember in your presentation you said that you felt like they forced people to type annotations mm -hmm. too much. And is that your main takeaway from a lot of those other attempts? Is that they're always forcing people to try and type their try yeah. to type. I I, I did type a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little bit of survey about the, the previous uh, research or something, and I, the two things I can tell is the the gathering compile time information out of the non-typed no type annotation software is not really good enough. So the the previous attempts, including diamond bags and uh, say uh, like a uh, uh, type type to scheme, I, I remember that yeah. they were yeah, with all all of the all failed and gave up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, given up, I mean. But uh, so we so the one thing I know for sure, so we need something addition in addition, like a like a you know the these kind of the runtime type information gathering by database things is the my attempt to add info to to the, the, the programming structure information. So how would you think we can, we'll, we'll change the topic here in a second. <laughs> um, how do you think people would interact with it? Like, uh, you know, would I, would it, when I run code, would it complain at me or would I have to decide, oh, you know what, I'll do my type checking before I check it into Git. Like, how do you think, how would you want people to interact with the type checking? Uh, the, the fundamentary, so the, I want the compiler or type checker to read our intention from the code so that you, you don't have to make some kind of interaction. But uh, at the same time, for, at least for the short term, so we can try to read our document like a yard things, then we can add the information back and forth to uh, read the yard documentation. Like we, Often we write the yeah, documentation with the return value and the argument value, mm -hmm. so we can take information from that in the short term, and then maybe in the future we can, in reverse, we can put that kind of those information into the yeah, documentation. Okay. Um, we have questions. Uh, we ha we we're, we're swapping. Yes. Okay, this question is uh, on MRuby. Is now a good time to change the topic? That's to fine, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Matt, uh, um, I know that MRuby is not a fork. I learned it just today of 1.9. It is a brand new code base, correct? Uh, off of 1.9? Uh, MRuby is a brand new code base. It wasn't forked from 1.9. Uh, no, no. no. Uh, I took the the, yeah, the description from one nine source code base, but uh, I modified a lot, so I don't consider the MRuby to be the fork of the one nine. Okay, so what? So my question is, uh, what would it take to get some of these improvements, performance and GC improvements, from the current Ruby into MRuby, or is that not even on the plan? Uh, the the biggest improvement on top of the one nine. After the one nine was the the making it generational and the making it incremental, and uh, the MRuby garbage collector is the is generational and incremental from day one, so we don't have to put in that kind of uh, improvement on MRuby GC. Uh, but, but what about some other improvements like uh, making hash faster or any, mm -hmm. in general? How do I get the code that is in Ruby into MRuby? Uh, yeah, it is it is quite possible. But uh, you know, we have for MRuby we have some what somewhat different criteria about including that. For example, so the MRuby can should reduce the memory consumption, so that the some improvement that re consumes more memory cannot be uh, integrated into MRuby. But uh, 
yeah, open addressing hash is the one, one idea that, that should be get into the MRuby. So I, I know that uh, C Ruby and M Ruby are both your children, so you can't pick a favorite. <laughs> yeah. But do you do you do you ever feel like well, as you work on M Ruby that you, some of the things that some of the I won't call them mistakes, some of the decisions that were made in C Ruby that you made different decisions in M Ruby and that you like those decisions better? Do you find yourself uh, feeling that way? Uh, yeah, I have two favorite things in MRuby that better than C Ruby, which is uh, one is the uh, MRuby drops some the legacy cryptics, the Dara variables, mm -hmm. like a Dara comma or Dara semicolon, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. something like that. And then the second thing, since the MRuby has the embeddable C API, which is uh, slightly better to to embed some and something, uh, embed the Ruby virtual machine into your application. So one thing we have people that are raising, like raise hands in the middle of the seats, like the the rows as well. Do we want? Well, let if them we're know? lining up, then we're lining up. So okay. So are we? Are we lining? I think up? we're lining up. Now. Apparently, this is the easiest mic runner job ever. Thank okay. you. <laughs> I do what I can. Now Mike, now Mike has the mic. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Um, Matt, I was wondering if you could, I think you gave, uh, or you announced the Ruby 3x3 last year. Mm -hmm. Could you give us an update on that, the progress that's been made and positives and negatives that have come out in the last year? Uh, last year, we proved some, so for example, the, the forthcoming uh, Ruby 2.4 in next Christmas, we will have the faster the hash and then faster rational numbers. And then we have made several uh, performance improvements, including those uh, improvements. Ruby 2.4 will be slightly faster than Ruby 2.3. So that we, we will add up the, those kind of improvements until we will get the, the three times faster Ruby 3 comparing to Ruby 2.0. So, so yeah. I mean that's good. So you feel like the, each the the releases are the status reports mm -hmm. for Ruby three, right? So yeah. as we get two four, we see it's you know however many times faster on the whatever relevant benchmark we're using, yeah. op carrot or whatever we're using, right? So yeah, okay. And then we we are now preparing to the some kind of the web application benchmark as mm. as as, as, as with the, along with the opt carrot, which is kind of different from the <laughs> normal usage. It <laughs> it's very interesting, though. Yeah, because, it's very interesting. Um, but you uh, know, I, I, we can only run the end body simulation so many times before we realize it's yeah. not, no one really does that. People do play Nintendo, though. Mm -hmm. So that's a better, that's better uh, event. Yeah, part. in that sense, it's yeah. better. Uh, yes, we can go to another question. Um, you are very intent in your talk on not breaking backwards compatibility, which I think is great. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, if you could, if there was no drawback to it, what are your top three Ruby features that you would get rid of? Top three? You get this question every year. You, this should, you should just be wop, 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 wop. Yeah, right the Perl, Perl like, yeah, the variables inherited from Perl, and then threads. <laughs> 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 and then what else? Uh, Maybe I, I should make eval a keyword. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah, the old dollar one, dollar two. Yeah, yeah dollar one, dollar yeah, two things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and the GSA broke to take a much, much data <laughs> <laughs> instead of the much, much the result of storing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, some of my friends have suggested there's maybe a one word answer to this question. And if that's true, that's fine. Uh, I just wanted to know, uh, for the new concurrency model, mm -hmm. uh, why didn't you use actors? Uh, you know, we, we decided to make no breaking, uh, compatibility breaking, breakage, so that we have to keep our thread model inside of something we are going to introduce. The actor, the name actor is, you know, not fit in that kind of model. That's only reason. It's very loaded at this point, too, <laughs> the, the term actor. Yeah. 
Uh, well, I'm, I'm wondering what the one word answer is that. Because? <laughs> oh, compatibility, okay, okay. I would have liked because, personally, but, that, <laughs> uh, but I have a five-year-old, so, you know. <laughs> uh, yes? Hey, so um, contributing to Ruby as a new contributor is a little tricky to wrap your mind around sometimes. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people talk about that being, there's a lot of friction in that process. Is the core team thinking about ways to make that easier for new contributors or uh, thinking about other ways to try and bring more people into contributing to Ruby core? Uh, since Ruby it has long history of development and uh, we have a lot of constraints, but uh, you know we have improved the things a lot better. For example, we have the uh, we have GitHub repository already, and then uh, we accept the pull request to there. So the I'm, I'm not sure what what else we can improve that. But uh, if you have an idea, so just submit uh, to the the Ruby bugs. Uh, the issue tracker. I, I think I'll follow up on that real fast. Are there places that, um, you know, I think uh, people wonder where, like what parts of Ruby, if they want to contribute, that they could contribute to? Like, uh, like does CGI.RB need a new maintainer or whatever, you know? Like a that good example. Do you have any of those off offhand? I mean, we could, I, I'm, not, I'm not putting you on the spot here at all, obviously, but, uh, you know, that might be a good thing to have that as a list somewhere. Mm -hmm. I know that I know that uh, I know that that Ruby Core has been very good about finding and just accepting new maintainers for old for peak things in the standard library, mm -hmm. for instance. Any, any yeah. thoughts there? Uh, you know, the, the from time to time uh, we have the, some kind of the developer meeting in uh, mostly in Tokyo, and then we listed up the things we do and things we we have to do. And then, the, upon checking, the, we we put the, our uh, the agenda and the, what logs in, on top of the, our wiki. Mm -hmm. So the, the, by checking those wiki wiki pages, so that you can find the things we can cooperate. Mm -hmm. I know that at one point there was a big push. Well, maybe that was Rails. Was there a big push? There was a big push at one point to like really try and improve a lot of the documentation. Do mm -hmm. we feel like that was a, a successful push? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you have the, some kind of the undocumented things, so you you can explain the things. And so mm -hmm. just submit the pull request to the source code or the. Yeah, the that's always a good, an easy place yeah. to start yeah. too. Yeah. Especially, I mean, especially now accepting pull requests that yeah. that helps people get involved. I think. Yeah. We uh, yeah we we don't directly uh, accept the pull request, but uh, we can easily uh, convert the pull request sure. into the yeah uh, the submersion uh, sub sub yep. submersion merge you know yep. Uh, I think many folks here might be surprised to understand that Ruby actually technically supports tail call optimization. Uh, but yeah. you, I don't think you could have made it harder to use. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance you're going to make that more accessible? What do you think, Kochi? <laughs> <laughs> it's up to him. <laughs> yeah, ask him maybe. <laughs> later. <laughs> I mean, I, I think we've we've talked about this before too. It's, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So, so actually, we ignore the uh, request about the telco optimization, but uh, we already implemented, but uh, it's in uh, default uh, disabled. So it depends on the request, uh, the, the voice of the request. So I voice. don't have an, uh, <laughs> so only only a few voices. So. <laughs> yeah, very few people are, uh, that require that. Okay, raise your only, hand. Only a few. Uh, we have some people raise their hand. Oh, I guess I'll ask those. I, I will follow up with a very technical question then, just to, just to quell the the minor uprising that's going on right now. Yeah. Do you want do you want self tail recursion or mutual tail recursion? It's not a recursion, but uh, uh, only a tail call. So it not depends on the uh, so the mutual so, so it would be, so it would be yeah, mutual. Yeah. So do you like stack traces? Yeah, yeah. That, that is a problem, <laughs> the technical problem. That because that, that's the main reason that they yeah, not yeah, yeah. that, that so, they don't get turned on. Sometimes yeah. uh, uh, 
so stack trace is very diff uh, important for debugging. So we we need to keep the, uh, all of uh, stack traces. So the another idea is uh, introduce a, a new syntax mm. to uh, to for stale call. So like if we use a uh, go to mm -hmm. and, and function call uh, call function. So it so for example, it it can be a uh, tail call. So it is. Uh, so it is intentional, but uh, of course, go to is not acceptable no. by math. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it is a discussion we need. Um, let's see where were we? Yes. I'll go from radically technical to radically non-technical. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if you still enjoy maintaining Ruby, and what do you do to keep your interest and passion? Uh, in that? Yeah, I'm still enjoying maintaining Ruby. And uh, for at least for C Ruby, I don't I don't code for a long time. I, yeah, Koichi and other core maintainers do, do code, but you know the but, uh, but uh, as a language designer, the, the making the design and the making decisions is quite quite enjoying for me. And uh, yeah, and uh, I have some other project to work on as a programmer. <laughs> yeah. Howdy. Hi. Um, I was wondering what kind of documentation you might have had back when you were a user of one and future you. <laughs> uh, or, yeah, I was afraid of that response. Or any documentation once you had that email list where people started to get involved. Any documentation? At all, <laughs> even one code comment. Well, you've. I, 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 Were I will, all the Git commits WIP? I know there was no Git, but it was. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask us. I'll ask a similar uh, a follow between question. <laughs> you, uh, you have. I, I remember this. You said that uh, those first few posts you you were working on Ruby and you put it on uh, like a BBS or a FTP or something mm -hmm. like that, and then you told people, hey, you could download it. Uh, did you, was it just like download it and was there even a make file? Uh, it has make file. Was it, uh, but it was just a make file with a bunch of C, with a bunch of C? Yeah. And they was just like, have fun? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Fundamentally, yes. All right. I figured. Uh, <laughs> refresh my memory, was it online before or after the name? Was it online before, was it still Matt's Lisp when it was on online? No, it was online as a Ruby. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ruby, okay. I named it Ruby way before I, I put it in, on the Ruby. Okay, okay. Yeah, internet. So no, no documentation. <laughs> no documentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Akira Matsuda in RubyConf Brazil talked uh, a, a little bit about that some of the standard library is requiring maintainers and that you are making some effort to extract the standard library from Core Ruby into their own repositories yeah, yeah. in order to make it easier. Um, what's the update on that, and how can we stay up to date on what are those libraries? Yeah, uh, back to 1.8 era, so we didn't have the proper Ruby gem systems ecosystem. So the, at, I made a, some kind of decision. We put everything we need into one distribution. So, to, so once you in, install the Ruby, so you can do the XML processing, the web, web application, everything. By but the way, uh, I still love RexML. I'll just put that out there. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah. And then we gather those kind of the, the library out of the internet. But uh, that's, as time passed, so the, some uh, methods just disappeared. Some maintainers just graduated from school and, <laughs> <laughs> and no longer work for Ruby and no time for work work for the, the maintenance standard libraries. So for those kind of reasons, so that we have some, some uh, unmaintained uh, the, the library in the, in the standard standard distribution. So the two resolve and then, yeah we uh, yeah. So the, for those kind of reasons, so we gradually moved the, that kind of standard library out of the standard distribution to, to gems. For example, we recently put uh, the TK uh, out, of, out of standard distribution. I don't know, I mean, the, uh, we made the, the TK as a bundle gem, so we can, you can up, uh, update 
the TK gem, the, the independent from the Ruby version. Mm -hmm. So the, then we gradually moved the, those gems out of the standard distribution gradually. And then, so the, we, I think we have uh, the list of maintainers uh, uh, in, uh, in the, our wiki pages. And then, so the, we, you can find the unmaintained standard library there. And then, yeah, I'm happy you raised your hand to pick up <laughs> my new maintainer. <laughs> Uh, I have a question for you as a language designer. Mm -hmm. um, so Ruby 2 has been remarkably easy to upgrade to, at least for my company. And um, I'm just wondering if, you know, basically I just see improvements every time we upgrade. Um, do you have any big regrets about Ruby 2 that you haven't been able to address and that you want to address in Ruby 3 that we, you haven't mentioned yet? Other than threads. <laughs> Other than threads. Uh, I, I don't know. but uh, I. I said I try to keep compatibility for no reason. And I mean, I mean, if there's reason, or, so we make some incompatibility. And uh, so, what? But uh, those kind of incompatibility should be minimal and uh, not, you know, should not harm many people, like uh, maybe Two or three people. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, I give you, I, like I, I have this this question as well. Like the in two four, the integer unification has some backwards incompatibility yep. because, like uh, before, you could have a method on fixed num that wasn't on big num if you if you added it yourself. And in the in two four, they'll it will be in both places because mm -hmm. uh, fixed num and big num are just they're same, all they yeah. all point to the same class now, right? Yeah. Uh, so you're okay breaking some, like fixing some things and breaking some incompatibility. Do you feel, do you kind of look at the feature and kind of say like, well, you know, no one should have been depending on this. I know that we, this is many years now, but I know that for instance, um, redo, remember we, 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 we decided that the redo keyword, this is like five years ago yeah, now, yeah. we decided the redo keyword was too problematic and it was okay to break backwards compatibility, right? Yeah. So you kind of have to look, you wanna look at all of those little ones and decide that's small enough or dangerous enough to break, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and then, uh, yeah. I don't think we can remove redo keyword if well, we in, have you know, now. In the block, yeah. in, we, the, in the block. Yeah. I don't think it works in, Koichi, does it work in? No. In 2.0, it doesn't, yeah, I didn't think so. So, so it, I mean, it was, a good, it was, I guess it was removed in 2.0 anyway, so never mind. But. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, yeah, the, so the, there's no, you know, there's no rule that can be breakable, but the compatibility is one of them. So the, we break compatibility sometimes, but uh, very few times for the sake of compatibility. <laughs> During the, the, the uh, discussion about the uh, possibly adding a code of conduct to Ruby, you said that uh, you never wanted anyone to be permanently banned in the Ruby community. Can you yeah. just explain why you feel that way? Uh, wait, that, that long, long discussion was kind of confusing. So the, we, you know, the Ruby community is a vague thing. So one can consider yourself as a the member of the Ruby community without any say, initiation or anything. Membership so, fees. Yeah, member, well, yeah, membership fees on anything. So, so how can we ban those kind of things? No, no. So for that reason, so I cannot accept the banning from anyone from the community. community. So if the, there is some kind of the, you know, the, the community or the group of people with that kind of the boundary. For example, uh, RubyConf has a attendee or non-attendee. We can have the, some kind of the strict boundary. So we can ban anybody who behave very bad from the, the conference, that's okay. But uh, we cannot ban anyone from the, you know, the big membership. So for that reason, I refuse that, the banning. What about, what about from, but you would consider it maybe from the C Ruby, 
the, yeah. uh, the C Ruby core team, right? Because uh, that's a different. That's a. Yeah, that's yeah, not. Yeah. That's a separate, very small. Yeah. Piece. If yeah, if the the discussion was to set up the, uh, the code of conduct among the C Ruby uh, the development team or something like that, it 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 can it could be possible. But uh, that dis discussion was the setting up the code of conduct for the whole Ruby community so that we cannot set up that kind of that, the code. Yeah, and uh, the Ruby development community itself is still vague, though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, you'd have, to, you'd have to start there. You'd have to start and say, like, where do, what is the, the boundaries yeah. that, we're, that we're talking about here, yeah. right? So. Hey, this is a little bit a futuristic question, but do you have any big, long-term big vision for Ruby, like maybe five, ten years from now? And how do you think it's going to transform over that long? Uh, I, I, wait, I, before you answer that question, mm -hmm. I will ask, I, I want him to answer your question. I will, I, it's hard. I know this is a hard question. So what I will say instead is, five years ago, so 2011, RubyConf, mm -hmm. Do you feel like that the things you thought about then that you've actually made good progress to where we are now, right? Let's, I, let's start with that question. So uh, think back five years. Where were we five years ago and where we are now? Do we feel like you've, we've accomplished a lot? Uh, I I five yeah. years ago, 2000. So, 2011. So let, let's see, we were in we were in New Orleans. Uh, we were in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, celebrating the tenth anniversary of the RubyConf. Right. And then we have, yeah, somewhat 500-ish attendees. Uh -huh. And then we haven't we had two or yet. One nine, one nine two, two, or one nine yeah. three or something. Uh -huh. Yeah, the Ruby 2 is the biggest conference in the in the last five years. Ruby 2, we implemented several new things, like uh, the module prepend and uh, uh, the refinement and some and and, uh, and uh, in the from last say five years Ruby runs much much faster in, so say at least the fifty percent faster for most of the cases. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. mostly due to the the improvement on the garbage collector and uh, some somewhat of the the internal structure improvement on the internal structure. So the Ruby became faster, and then Ruby became uh, more powerful, and the Ruby community beca become, became bigger, and the Ruby position in the technical industry, IT industry is uh, more, more established. So, um, yeah. what, Okay, so now thinking forward five years, mm. do you feel like we are on a good trajectory to continue those things, keep doing those things? Do you, uh, you know, put your future C glasses on? <laughs> yeah, so the, in five years, we will have the Ruby 3 in some, some form, and then we will have the even faster Ruby, and the, the in, by, you know, the, the future will be uh, utilized the uh, multi-core with in that time we have some 100, 128 cores on the PC. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. And then in addition, so the, you know, the Ruby should be Ruby still. I mean, you know, the, Technology comes and goes, so the Ruby is no longer a shiny language in at the present time even. So the my point is the the Ruby is keep improving and keep becoming more and more powerful, so that Ruby can survive in five ten years. So I'm not a believer of the the phrase that the slogan that the, from Intel the only paranoid can survive. So, so we, I try to be paranoid to <laughs> survive. So the surviving last two and 20 years is a kind of, kind of big challenge. And uh, the surviving next 10, coming this 10 years will be even harder. But uh, I try to survive after those kind of challenges. 
Hi. Um, I've, I've always been confused about um, the use of like uh, private and protected methods. And I think you've mentioned in the past like um, having some regrets about the naming either private and protected. And is there any uh, plans for fixing that in some ways in the future? Uh, I, yeah, I com to confess that I regret adding those flow kind of things, <laughs> especially protected. And uh, yeah, the, but uh, I, I don't think I, we can uh, fix them without breaking compatibility. So the, uh, I, I don't think I can remove them uh, for the sake of beauty, uh, at the cost of the pain <laughs> of the uh, in the community. Uh, let's do a quick survey. Who uses protected methods? Uh, There's two of you. Three. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure out an option. Yeah. Yeah. Something to consider. Who, who uses protected correctly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, who uses it correctly? Uh, the, I, I, do you ever use uh, protected methods? Uh, no. Yeah. So. <laughs> Koichi, do you ever use protected methods? No. Koichi doesn't use them either. So. I bet Nobu doesn't use them. Yeah, probably we, we have to bring Shugo here. <laughs> Shugo, yeah. He added. Yeah. Oh, he, oh, yeah. <laughs> he probably still uses them. He's probably the only one. Uh, probably he's not using. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, I've heard his, he said it, he, he regrets. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, something to consider for Ruby 3. Uh, yes. Um, so. Often in RubyConf, we see a lot of other languages being displayed on slides and talking about other languages. I'm curious if there are any other languages that you're playing with or getting inspiration from. Uh, I'm a language geek. I love to learn, uh, study about uh, the programming language in general. So I recently I studied, I checked uh, Elixir and uh, Clojure, the Scala. What else? Uh, a little bit of a Haskell, which is kind of difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, some streaming programming language like uh, the Pony or I don't remember the name. The, uh, I just read through the uh, Sozel, which is a Google streaming language. And uh, but, uh, we don't have implementation <laughs> <laughs> out, out of Google. Yeah, but those kind of language. I think we're, we've got one, one last question here. Perl was one of your uh, languages that inspired you, some of the features in Ruby originally. And Perl 6 came out just last year. Mm -hmm. um, besides taking 10 years to come out, is there anything you can learn from Perl 6? Uh, actually, the, I, I'm pretty satisfied that I see influence from Ruby in Perl 6. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, besides that, I. I'm pretty impressed by the, their rules, which is the, kind of the, their internal DSL to define some new syntax or grammar into the, the language or something. And uh, it is a different form of the regular expression. So I, I'm quite impressive. It was quite impressive, but uh, I'm not sure we can add it, it to, the, to Ruby. All right, well, we have 30 seconds left, so we're right on time. So I want to thank Matt, and I want to thank all of you for all of your questions, and I want to thank you for a really great RubyConf, and uh, that C RailsConf COP is open right now, so we go, time's a ticking. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, we've got social available right outside those doors. Go out there, have a good time, talk with your fellow Rubyists, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Yeah.